So initial briefs have been filed in the California assault weapons ban case, Miller v. Bonta, and this case is now proceeding forward to be resolved before the end of November. So let's talk about this. But real quick before we jump into this video, if you believe California's ban on so-called assault weapons is unconstitutional, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Also, I want to thank the sponsor of this video, which is Excess Sites. For more than 25 years, the Excess team has created some of the most innovative sites on the market for pistols, rifles, and shotguns. I've purchased multiple Excess Sites in the past. Recently, I actually purchased some for one of my new handguns. It's a Glock 17, has an aimpoint acro on it. So I wanted some solid sights. So I actually purchased once again, some Excess Sites. As many of you know, these sites are absolutely awesome. I trust them with my life. And if you've never used them, I highly recommend you check them out. So if you're interested, go over to Excess Sites, check them out, and thank you again, Excess, for sponsoring this video. So like I said in the intro, Judge Benitez, or St. Benitez, as he's known in California, now has control of the Miller v. Bonta California assault weapons ban case. In this case, Judge Benitez requested that both of the parties file all of their briefs before the end of 60 days. The first initial deadline was for both parties to file their supplemental briefs within 45 days of his filing and of that order. And now both of the parties have submitted their first supplemental briefs. And this is the first time that we've actually seen the state of California have to argue using the Bruin standard text as informed by history and tradition. Now, for those not aware, Miller v. Bonta is a challenge to the state of California's ban on so-called assault weapons. Under California Penal Code Section 30515, the state bans various types of firearms based on their characteristics. Originally on review, this case, uh, Judge Benitez found that this case was an average case about average guns using average ways for average purposes. And that language is actually really important for something that we talk about later in response to California's brief that they just filed. After he struck down California's assault weapons ban, he did issue a temporary stay on his own order that was set to terminate in 30 days. The temporary stay was in place for the state of California to seek a permanent stay or to seek an appeal up to the Ninth Circuit, which ultimately they did. Then this case, Miller sat for a while at the Ninth Circuit. It was on wait essentially for the Supreme Court to rule in the Bruin decision. Once the Supreme Court did rule in Bruin, then a bunch of cases at the Ninth Circuit level were remanded back down to the district court level. And that's what happened in this Miller case as well. It was remanded by the Ninth Circuit back down to Judge Benitez. Now this case is back in the hands of Judge Benitez. And recently Judge Benitez held a hearing to set the Miller v. Bonta case for resolution within 60 days of that recent order. So essentially in two weeks, as of right now, all the briefs in this case will be filed and Judge Benitez has indicated that he will either decide this case based on the record and based on the prior case, the prior record, and also these additional supplemental briefs and responses. He can do that on those alone, or if he deems necessary, he can actually set a hearing to be scheduled. So indications right now are that maybe he will just simply decide it on the record. So likely within maybe two, three weeks, maybe uh, maybe a little bit longer, uh, this case, Miller v. Bonta, the California assault weapons ban case, can be resolved at the district court level. Another really important thing that happened is right now with the filing of these briefs, it marks the first time that the state of California actually had to put forward arguments using the new uh, New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruin standard. It's not really a new standard. It's simply a reaffirmation of Heller and McDonald, the true test that always should have been, which is text as informed by relevant history and tradition. But this is the first time that the state of California actually had to put forward some sort of arguments using that standard. In the briefs that they just filed to Judge Benitez, the state of California makes some pretty wild arguments. First, they say California's Assault Weapons Control Act, the AWCA, does not impact conduct protected by the text of the Second Amendment. To reach this absurd conclusion, the state of California argues first that the accessories and various configuration bans on semi-automatic centerfire rifles, which are ultimately banned, are not arms under the text of the Second Amendment. California states that the AWCA does not prohibit anyone from keeping or bearing any arm. Instead, it merely regulates the use of certain accessories that can be attached to a semi-automatic centerfire rifle, such as an AR-15 platform rifle. They state that none of the regulated accessories are arms, nor are they integral to the functioning of any firearm. Then they say that the firearms with accessories and the configurations of these types of firearms in question are not in common use for self-defense. The main point in this section that California puts forward is they try to argue that rifles of this type are not used, needed, or commonly owned for self-defense purposes. In this section, California first starts by arguing that Benitez got the analysis wrong. In this brief, California states that in the prior proceedings, this court distinguished between firearms commonly owned by law-abiding citizens for lawful purposes and unusual arms adapted to unlawful uses 
as well as arms solely useful for military purposes. But common ownership is not enough. The phrase in common use as used in Heller and McDonald does not simply refer to a weapon's prevalence in society or the quantities manufactured or sold. Instead, California believes that the Second Amendment only protects firearms which are heavily or commonly used in self-defense scenarios. California calls this a more holistic common use test that accounts for suitability in actual use as opposed to simple ownership. Now, this is important because this is not the only time in California's brief that they try to modify various tests that have been outlined by the Supreme Court in Heller, McDonald, Bruin, Caetano. They tried to kind of modify a lot of these tests in their brief to try to support this ban in the state of California. Now, because of those two sub arguments that they make that accessories are not arms and that these rifles are not in common use for self-defense, California puts forward the main argument of their brief that the AWCA, this law in the state of California, does not burden conduct protected by the text of the Second Amendment, and therefore their ban is indeed constitutional. Then California argues that if Judge Benitez does find that the AWCA impacts conduct protected by the text of the Second Amendment, then history surrounding the regulation of dangerous or unusual weapons supports this California law. Now in this section, like I mentioned, California once again tries to change a test which has been outlined by the Supreme Court in various other cases. California states that this test is the dangerous or unusual weapons test. Here they are outright changing the requirements that have been stated by the Supreme Court in prior cases. The standard is actually dangerous and unusual. The Supreme Court has been very clear about the dangerous and unusual test and many times has stated that firearms in common use cannot fall under this category because by very nature of them being in common use for lawful purposes, they cannot be dangerous and unusual. But California has to lie about this test. They have to lie about the language that actually applies because they know the standard AR-15, which is banned under their law, is the most commonly owned and used rifle in America and therefore cannot be dangerous and unusual. The only justification California puts forward for outright trying to change this standard and language is a footnote reference to the Blackstone Dictionary. So essentially California argues that Judge Benitez should forget about Supreme Court precedent. He should forget about the four other Supreme Court cases and should use dangerous or unusual instead of the curb precedent, which is dangerous and unusual. And really the skewed language is the foundation of a lot of California's argument in this brief. And I suspect they will get hammered by the plaintiffs in the response brief. And also they will probably get hammered by Judge Benitez and his ruling in this case as well. In fact, if you look at Judge Benitez's prior decision in this case in granting the original preliminary injunction, he in fact stated that this case is not about extraordinary weapons lying at the outer limits of the Second Amendment's protection. The banned assault weapons are not bazookas, howitzers, or machine guns. Those arms are dangerous and solely useful for military purposes. Instead, the firearms deemed so-called assault weapons are fairly ordinary, popular modern rifles. So that is what Judge Benitez has said about this whole dangerous and unusual argument prior that the state of California has put forward. Now, there are a lot more arguments that happen and are made in this brief, but essentially those are the main ones that I wanted to point out and for you guys to take away from the arguments that California is putting forward. So now that those initial briefs have been filed, now each party gets to file their responses and that has to happen within 15 days. So within 15 days, this case is gonna be back in the hands of Judge Benitez. He will have all the papers that are required and then he gets to decide what he wants to do in this case. So if you get any more information, I will let you all know. If you have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I'll try to answer the best of my ability. Also, like this video and like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm or fuel Algor's rhythm. It adds fuel to his jet and signal to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. Again, I want to thank everybody who likes, comments, subscribes, who hits the notification bell, who shares these videos. You guys are directly impacting these videos, impacting this channel, helping me to reach and educate more people than I could ever do on my own. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget, this nation is built by Scholars and this nation will be maintained by Scholars.